We've just a couple of quick things that we I wanted to do before we um park. <laughs> before we set up. And um, one of them is to introduce everybody to Harry because um some of the people who are around and who have not met you before, that would be really good. Step forward, step forward, yeah. Thank you. It's just a real pleasure to be able to have you at the mills today. Go ahead. We have a surprise for you, so hang on a second. I've got my, my tickets here. <laughs> We just wanted to give you this card um, just to mark you um, coming along as our honorary right. resident, which very is much. just um, to say thank you for that. And that is very mm -hmm. much on behalf of everybody in the society, yeah. all the members, because they're very pleased to have you. Oh, thank you very thank much, you. Well, ladies and gentlemen. That's Thank you very much for inviting me tonight because uh, you didn't have to, but you did, and it's fantastic. And what can I, what else can I say? Uh, the fun that I've had in this Mills Observatory with the uh, Astronomical Society and before. I mean, I can tell you stories that you wouldn't believe. I don't know if uh, Dave. Dave Gavin has uh, mentioned any of them before, but some of the stories are just bizarre and unbelievable. We like for these instance, ones. Sorry? We like these ones. Well, <laughs> okay, then. for instance, we didn't start from the Mills Observatory, uh, as uh, uh, Ken had been able to tell you. We started in the committee hut of the Law Hill allotments, you see. <laughs> and uh, this was a strange place because it had uh, gas heating. And uh, the gas cock was at the door, but the actual heater was at the other side of the room. So you had to turn on the gas cock and then run with a light <laughs> to the other side and uh, hope that you didn't have an explosion. <laughs> but it was great fun. When your, when your taper went out. Oh, yeah, well, you really, you'd really, you really had it. She's still gassing away. That's right. <laughs> and just think, we could have been lost forever before we had the privilege of uh, Patrick Moore coming on TV. And of course, the great comet Aaron Rowland, which Patrick always had as Aaron Rowland, as it was some kind of deodorant. <laughs> uh, but um, these were fantastic days, but they, we did great work. And we did, we were sometimes doing groundbreaking work. For instance, I've just um, looked out and I've got photocopied from uh, BAA Journal. This isn't the first thing, important thing that we did, but um, uh, 1974, yeah, the Strathpeffer Fireball. We got the uh, first two station photography of a fireball in the British Isles. Now, one of the uh, cameras was up on the balcony here, facing north by chance. I can't remember the reason for it. And uh, away at, Lo at um, Loch Erin Head, we had uh, Dave, uh, Jamie Shepherd from Edinburgh with a chap that you may have heard of uh, in, in the group, and that was uh, Robert McNaught. But anyway, the one photograph was just of the meteor itself, the fireball, and the other one was a photograph from Loch Head using the chopped shutter so that they were able to measure height, speed, distance, and so on. It was quite fantastic. And I had the privilege last week of uh, giving a copy of that VAA journal, journal, that part of it, to the chap who has just come to Eastbourne, who's now our new treasurer in the Eastbourne Astronomical Society. He's uh, head of the Fireball um, Survey Group. And uh, he, I haven't heard his reaction to it yet, but it was way ahead of his all sky cameras that he's setting up and involved with all over Europe. So it really did great stuff. And um, uh, when I left, you know, it's almost, you know, there was a young man of Balgay 
who wandered far south of the Tay. But I'll leave you to finish off the rest of it. <laughs> uh, but you know, I carried on all everything that I've learned up here, down there. And by the way, Dave Green was an expert at the old uh, sticky back plastic, like me. I'm talking about outreach, because I'm now yeah. really totally involved with outreach to the extent of buying toy telescopes and cutting them up in bits to show the kids what's in, inside. Because that's what I wanted when I was 10. Somebody just show me what was inside. Okay? And uh, uh, really, that, that's, what, that's what I'll be doing for the, for the rest of my life. But I've also done, in recent uh, week, weeks and months, outreach uh, to the neighbours uh, where I live. Uh, fortunately, we've got an area to do that. And um, we did the uh, partial eclipse of the sun earlier in the year. It kept getting cloudy, but nevertheless, I was able to show the neighbour something. So all sorts of, what, what, well, what other story can I tell? Oh, yes, uh, Robert McNaught. He was a very naughty boy. Um, <laughs> he, used to, he used to travel on the train for free. And he did it this way. He had a, uh, well, a conspirator at the one station who would buy two platform tickets. <laughs> and then when uh, Robert got off the train, he had his own, he had a ticket ready for him. <laughs> Thanks to his uh, friend waiting for him. But the great story, again, we're back to the fireballs, back to the meteors and so on. Uh, <clears throat> Robert Minot went into a session of uh, uh, meteor photography. And there was one little camera which was just perfect for the job. Um, it was a Russian, it was made to look like a simple, Twin lens reflex, you see, this is back in the days. I don't know if any of you have heard of the roll film, <laughs> <laughs> but the Lubertel took uh, two and a quarter square pictures. And um, it's just perfect, so cheap. You could set it up, and he decided that uh, they would do all sky work with the Lubertel. So he went into, I think it was Elena May, the photographer in Dundee and asked if they sold the Lubitel camera from all the way from Mother Russia. And uh, he said, yeah, we have, we do. And he said, oh, what can I have six, please? <laughs> <laughs> Which must have been a shock um, because of course he was arranging them in a circle, uh, pointing at an angle so that they had virtually all sky coverage before all sky cameras really came into or onto the market. So, uh, what else? Well, yes, yeah, one thing you're again transferring from Mills Observatory uh, in a personal sense, this is. Um, I've actually used uh, the 28 inch telescope at Greenwich for public viewing, you see? And um, uh, the one occasion I had swung. The 28 inch round, forgetting all about inertia, mm. thinking that I was swinging around the 10 inch upstairs, and it carried me right across the floor, <laughs> <laughs> trying to stop it from coming back because it was a massive thing, tons and tons of weight. Oh, but uh, it, it was great. By the way, it's very of you are interested in the detailed engineering, the 28 inch telescope has um, uh, the polar axis, a great big iron frame, which if there was no telescope attached, if it was just that frame on its own, it would be a tremendous uh, relic of the first industrial revolution because it's the largest iron casting ever made mm -hmm. up to that point. And it was made by Ransom and uh, Ransom and Sims, Ransom and May, uh, who uh, made agricultural implements, you know, lawnmowers and so on. Uh, but I'm right back now from using what you might say was the biggest refractor in Britain, fourth largest in the world, the best refractor possibly in the world, the 10 inch cook upstairs, 
and right down now, the breaking up little toy telescope. <laughs> and it is great fun and I'm really enjoying it. There's one little thing of uh, a research you might classify as such. Um, a, a new idea has come up. I've, I've always wanted to actually find micrometeorites. Yeah. You see, I've got a good microscope uh, to do that. But what you're supposed to do is to scoop out all the water from the guttering mm -hmm. and put it through a filter paper. And uh, it didn't appeal to me at all. But uh, there's a, a new system. Trays, flat trays laid out to collect the rainfall directly. And then you get a magnet inside a polythene bag and go through the water. And the magnet will pick them up and then try to get them off the polythene bag. So that's one little uh, thought that uh, that's in my mind. But mainly it will be, it'll be uh, outreach for me. The Eastbourne Astronomical Society don't have um, uh, an, an observatory, but they have a Napoleonic fort called the Redoubt on the seashore. And uh, it's got a wide parapet and a great big circle. Put your, all the telescopes, big ones as well, or the most elaborate ones, so long as they're remotely portable, then the members of the Eastbourne Astronomical Society put them up there. And I've had little orreries and so on. I'm glad to see you've got still got the orrery out there. That's, that's really great. I'm going to get one for myself. So uh, th this, I don't know whether it's uh, an infection or whatever, but there's no way I'm completely incurable. There's no way I can stop all this nonsense. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, the great, and the great stories that go with it, I've probably forgotten half of them. The great memory of uh, Patrick Moore's uh, straw hat flying off into a volcano. That's something for the <laughs> that's something for the memoirs, and especially since the the, the fact is he got it back. That <laughs> was out of the volcano. So it's it's great fun, and I'm so pleased to be able to. Uh, and I, I hope that my gabbling has uh, at least given you given you some laughs. If I think of any more. Uh, but I've got serious lectures to, to do as well. And I mean, one or two of them would be very um, relevant up here. For instance, um, masculine and Shahalian, mm -hmm. because I'm totally involved with uh, both sites, you see, Shahalian uh, and um, uh, masculine's work in, at Greenwich. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a whole lot of the stuff came from Greenwich, but when I was at Rockwell School, we used to go up the law, look to the northwest, and there was Shahalian, you see, which was quite encouraging. You know, it gave you a good thought about science and so on and so forth. Mind you, we looked due west, we could see Dunce and Enfield, <laughs> and the only, the only play of Shakespeare that we ever did was, of course, was Macbeth. <laughs> but, uh, that's the story there. That's, but there's so much, there's so much. And the idea of Greenwich itself, I was 19 years exploring around all the little bits. And the only thing I never saw was the ghost, which is supposed to be there. <laughs> but I got a lot of um, perks, if you like, um, like um, Big, Big Ben, I've been right up uh, to Big Ben. And of course, me was able to have a good old chat with Helen Sharman. And uh, that was very interesting because I asked her, um, these jumpsuits in the space station, I mean, how could you wear them for all that time? And she said, we didn't. We went around in our undies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, don't we wore the jumpsuit when they had these sort of heads of state speaking to them and so on. So <laughs> and uh, I thought it's a good job I'm a member of the paparazzi. Uh, they, they would have made something of that, you know. But, uh, I must say that it, it's it's been great fun. And oh, I'm hoping I've got a whole lot of years to go yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm now 83, and if I'd known I was going to live there. This long, I'd have looked uh, 
better, you know, I would have looked after myself better. <laughs> <laughs> but I will stop there. Hi, it's a complete pleasure. And we were certainly looking forward to some more of the stories. But uh, well, if, you could, if you could include some of them about, you know, like Ken and Bill and that, that oh, would be yeah. just um, oh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's great to meet you all, but even though I, I really haven't seen you yet, you know, because of all the, and you haven't seen me either, so yeah, you might be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.